How's it going? Matt Miller here. Hey, listen, um, had a bit of feedback. Like, I go up a tree putting sticks on, and I just use my pole belt. I don't use my tether as I go up. Um, again, I'm not here to teach you how to do it. I'm just going to explain why I do it. First off, it's faster. Secondly, um, I don't view climbing up sticks on a tree like this any different to you climbing up a ladder on your house okay the only difference is if you fall off your ladder and hit the ground because i'm guessing nobody really uses safety gear at home right where on this one i'm not going to hit the ground my lanyard will catch me sure it's going to hurt falling is not something that doesn't hurt right so um, my main goal is not to hit the ground you know going 100 miles an hour basically so i might like uh, bang my my shin or something on one of the other steps or something like that but i'm not going to hit the ground now the biggest thing that i see a lot of people is that you guys don't have any faith in your gear okay if you want to be fast and confident you need to understand your gear and what it's capable of i mean for instance uh if you look at this, this is the tethered carabiner here so uh, that's rated to 26 kilonewtons, okay, which works out 2.6 uh, tons. That's K, like, uh, actually, the pounds, I don't know, uh, freedom units. But anyway, that's like 2,600 kgs, right? So what's that? A little bit of 5,000 pounds breakage, okay? So you can hang, in fact, most cars, well, maybe European cars, not you guys, big trucks and stuff like that. But you can, you can hang a lot of stuff off this, okay? So the carabiner is not really a weak point, so to say. Uh, if you don't have the bridge done up in it, that is a, a crucial thing. Uh, that needs to be done up tight. I don't. I usually don't use screw screw gates in uh, arbor culture. We use triple locking carabiners. It means you can just let it go and it automatically uh, locks. And I think one day I might change out to that, or I might talk to Tethered and see if they want to put some premium carabiners out there that, like, just much nicer, a little bit more peace of mind. Um, the next weak part in your system is not the rope. Okay, ropes. Again, I'm not actually sure what this one's rated to. Uh, I'm going to guess it's probably it's probably three or four tons again. Um, so this is just the eight mil as well. Um, but the next thing actually uh, in your system that's a weak point is your connection. So either your knot or your splice. A splice is much stronger than any knot. A knot halves a breaking strain of a rope by about 50%. And that's because like a rope is strong straight up and down like this when all the fibers are in line. If you have a knot, it bends it, right? And so the outside ones are stretched, the inside ones are uh, relaxed. And so when the pressure comes on, not all the fibers can hold the weight properly, right? It doesn't distribute up and down nicely up and down there. So that's uh, basically how that, that part works. The people have asked also about this thing. I'll just take it off. I run a different lanyard system um, to a lot of you guys do. And I do this because of the Arbor Culture days. It's just easier to clip on and off. It really doesn't make that much banging around. It kind of... Like rubs a little bit you know I've got the microphone here too so it's probably a lot noisier than it actually is but people ask about uh, you know the rope men so I'm running this on an 8 mil rope and the rope men uh, you know suggests 10 to 13 mils so the reason from that is not uh, the strength but what happens is if you happen to have uh, slack in your line and you fell on it the teeth are likely to shear the core, or the, sorry, the, the, the teeth are likely to shear the, uh, the sheath of the rope. So you have a sheath over the top and a core in the middle, okay? And if it tears that, sh uh, that sheath, then you're likely to slip down. And that's another reason why you always need to have a stopper knot in the end of it. Because if that happened, uh, you would probably bunch up and still stop on the stopper knot, okay? But that is why uh, they recommend the different diameter. It's nothing to do with the actual like strength of, of you holding it there. It's in the case of a fall where there would be slack in your system and that teeth grabs on the smaller diameter rope slightly to rip that sheath off. So if you have you know the 10 to 13 mil there's more surface area there and the teeth is likely I mean it might damage the sheath a little bit. The teeth are likely to damage the sheath we did rhymes today but yeah you get the idea right there's more surface area there for the teeth to contact into and so less likely chance that it can actually cut through it. 
so that's your lanyard system and again like straight up and down on this uh you know you could in theory hold it of most cars off of most family you uh you know european style cars so you know five thousand pounds let's put that on that so yeah that's that's how your pole belt works uh and it's the same with everything actually um your bridges and things like that like every time you climb like I get real. I mean, this is like a lecture here, and I don't mean it to be. I was supposed to just turn up, show you you can't fall off with a pole belt, but I've gone into a bit of a discussion. So um, it really annoys me, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm glad I'm glad people are safe. But there should be no surprises. Like every time you climb up a tree, whether it's the um, cords on your sticks, right, the ones that go around, you should be checking everything for frayed marks, damage, rust you know make sure everything's functioning properly okay so those posts are like hey this is just a warning to you guys this happened to me hey man i'm really glad you're happy but that should never have happened at all okay before you get leave the ground in any situation you need to be checking your gear okay it's totally preventable so it makes me a little bit like kind of frustrated that people don't do that the same as like you guys will see those posts every year where the guy's tree stand falls right breaks oh look at this cord it's like rusty the whole way through who would have thought huh didn't check it you know or left it out all season or something like that and just assume that it would be fine so um, every time you're at heights uh, you want to be well, before you go at heights you want to be checking your system to make sure it's it's good and it really doesn't take much you just kind of run your finger down the rope you can feel if it feels nice check the mechanical parts that the you know opening and closing fine you know the spring the spring in it still works uh, and you're good look you know um, and then you can just put a little bit of lubrication in it if it's a bit sticky or something like that. Um, but anyway, enough rambling. So basically what I'm here to show you is that uh, you cannot really fall to your death just using a lanyard. You're probably going to hurt yourself a little bit. Um, but basically let's pretend that we are sitting on, a, on the... Tr on the, on the step and it kicks out okay so the worst thing you can do is try and lean in okay the lanyard works when you're leaning out away from it so most people when they like remember we used to spike up trees okay and spikes kick out a lot more than platforms ever do or sticks ever do okay and so uh the worst thing you can do is to uh try and lean in but it's so natural you want to try and hang on but if you're in there hanging on a you're probably going to get your fingers stuck in underneath a rope that really freaking hurts i have done that before actually um and your lanyard is not going to work properly okay so basically like i'm probably going to crunch my nuts here a little bit and i hope i stay in the camera frame um but let me just do i'll just do a test to see if yeah, i'm going to stay in the camera frame but basically this is pretty normal i'm walking up i'm flipping my flipping my line up okay Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh. Can you see my feet? So if you're using your stuff right, it, it's not going to fall out. That's basically what I'm trying to tell you. Um, I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong, but you know, like that's what I'm talking about is you don't want to be hanging on here. Like every time you climb up, like even if I, let's put a little bit more slack in there. I'm trying to not have too much slack so I stay in camera frame for you. But basically if you're pretending you're climbing up, you want to flip this up, right? And then you stand up on your next step and you keep going, okay? And so even if you had it, like I would never have it, have it like this. I'm too far away from the tree, okay? So this is too much slack for me. But if I'm up here, like I might have it up here because I'm, you know, putting my next step on or something. So, I mean, instantly there, there you know, you're not gonna fall that, that bad, right? It's gonna grab at some stage. So having your tether, your lineman belt, sorry, they're the right size is half the, uh, the battle basically so i think I, I like to have it about like that he can still put it up higher just to get you know you want this spot clear for working with lines and stuff like that um and yeah like i was saying is look oh, oh you know kind of a little bit dramatized but what i'm trying to say is that if you are using your pole belt properly you almost can't fall down really slip like maybe you're climbing a birch tree or something like that with a slippery bark that might slip a little bit and if you are really 
really worried about it but again it's probably going to fall down and catch on your bottom step okay so you won't fall too far it's probably going to hurt but you can actually maybe these aren't quite long enough but you can go around and then back onto your belt obviously i need to take my daisy chain out but uh, again that kind of defeats the purpose of being quick and agile with your pole belt so it's just up to you guys like with a birch tree, because um, they're obviously way more multi-branched than this too, um, I will often climb with my tether on as well because you have to go over branch, over branch. You know what I mean? Like you never want to be disconnected in the tree is what I'm trying to say to you. Um, so most birches have that trade-off where they have nice branches that you can put your stuff over and so you won't fall down that much anyway. But anyway, I hope that helps you guys, gives you a little bit more confidence. Again, if there's a part of your gear you want to understand, let me know and I'm happy to talk about it all. Um, I was on the uh, you know, New Zealand Health and Safety Committee for Arboriculture for uh, geez, quite a few years actually and stuff like that. And I've written many health and safety documents. So I really understand tree climbing and tree gear. Cheers, guys.